Hello everyone, and welcome to another video from the Tiny Menagerie. There are a lot of tiny little fish on the market that are great for keeping in smaller tanks. And of those, these have got to be one of the best. This is the extremely diminutive Hengeli Rasbora, also sometimes called the Glowlight Rasbora thanks to that orange stripe that runs down their flank that is very reminiscent of the Glowlight Tetra. They are also sometimes incorrectly labelled as the Lamb Chop Rasbora, despite the fact that they are actually a completely different species. But these teeny tiny little fish are a delight to watch with their antics, and they are, as I say, perfectly suited to those smaller to medium sized aquaria. But overall, what do they like to keep, and what kind of setup do they need? Well, Hengelis originate primarily from Sumatra, where they inhabit lush, slow-moving rivers and streams that are often very densely planted with shade-tolerant plants such as the Cryptocorini species. These slow-moving waters are also typically full of decaying plant matter from the surrounding banks, and so at certain times of the year they can have a really very low pH. But this isn't necessary for merely keeping Hengelis, you only need the low pH if you are looking to breed them. They are in fact really quite tolerant of different water parameters, and any pH between 6 and 7.5 is absolutely fine for them, as well as a temperature of anywhere between 20 and 25 degrees C. What they are slightly fussier about though is lighting, and in very bright direct light they do have a tendency to hide whereas they're very much more active in moderate or dimly lit tanks. Also, when they're being kept in lower numbers, they do prefer to have something in the tank that they can use for cover, even if that's just plants or decorations or anything like that. If you have a large school of them on the other hand, at least 20 individuals, then they are very, very much braver, and they will be out in the open even in the most barest of tanks. And it's their behaviour, their individual personalities, that are perhaps one of the most endearing feature of these little fish. They are fantastic schooling species, they have a really tight, close-knit shoaling behaviour. They always prefer to be pretty much within reach of each other, it seems. And as they only grow to about 25 centimetres in length, and they're also a very slender little fish, then it is very easy to accommodate a good-sized school of them which you will want to do so, and as an absolute minimum they need to be kept in a shoal of at least six individuals. While they are very small though, Hengelis are remarkably quick and active, and this little fish is always on the move, exploring and usually looking for food, and for this reason, despite that teeny tiny size, they do need to be kept in a tank that is at least 60 centimeters in length, just so that they have the space to move around at speed. Luckily, they do utilise the majority of the tank space, right from the surface down to about 3 inches above the substrate. Although they never seem to get too close to that substrate, they don't like to actually touch it, not even if there's food that's drifted down there. The Hengeli will always leave it where it is, and just stay in slightly safer, slightly higher waters. Another thing of note is that Hengelis don't seem to really understand just how small they are. They are incurably curious little fish about pretty much anything that you put in their tank with them. They have an unwavering confidence that their speed can get them out of trouble. Indeed, whenever I put anything new in their tank, the Hengelis will almost invariably be the first ones to go and have an investigate. They're right up there trying to figure out what this new thing is. Which of course is extremely endearing, they're like a little group of puppies but it's also something you need to be aware of. In fact, over the last few months, my Hengelis have been whittling down in numbers, and I couldn't for the life of me work out what was happening to them. I thought maybe they were jumping out. Apart from the tank has a tightly fitting lid, there's no way they could do. Or maybe they were being eaten, but there's no sign of injuries, and there's no fish in that tank that's big enough to swallow them whole. And after much investigation, unfortunately what I did figure out is that they were getting stuck in the filter. Now, I only have the filters on in my tanks for a couple of hours a day, just to swish away any debris and to get the water moving so that it stays at the same even temperature, but the rest of the time they are completely still. And then one day, I saw a little Hengeli happily exploring around the outlet nozzle of a canister filter. 
With my heart sinking, of course, I cleaned out the filter, and lo and behold, found it had a lot of little bodies inside. As, one by one, they had been swimming up the outlet, along three feet of tubing right up into the filter itself, proving that curiosity kills overly brave little fish just as much as it does cats. Either way, the filter was replaced and an eternal one was bought, and a very hard lesson has been learned about just how silly little tiny fish can be. And that brings me to the other challenge about Hengelis, which is in fact a real shame, and that is just how difficult they are to come by in the hobby, certainly around where I am at least. And even when you see them in the shop when they're being advertised, more often than not, as soon as you go and get a little bit of a closer inspection of them, they will turn out to be lamb chop rasboras, as the two species seem to be constantly confused with each other, despite the fact they don't look that similar really. And the easiest way to tell them apart is simply that Hengelis are the only ones that have that very simple orange stripe that runs right down the flank, with the rest of the body being largely clear, whereas on lamb chop rasboras, they have much more colour in the body, much more orange and metallic colourations, and they are generally a little bit bigger as well. But what this means for me is that I am struggling to replace the fish that I have lost. And just to make matters even worse, these are not the easiest rasboras to breed, partly because they are fiendishly difficult to sex, but also because they don't even show any real interest in breeding until they're at least a year old which is more like what you would expect from a much larger fish, such as cichlids or the Corydorus, not from a little tiny fishlet like this. And so, if you are looking to breed your Hengelis, then you might find you're in for a much longer wait than you first anticipated. My losses have also shown me that even in very low numbers, they are still extremely brave little fish, perfectly happy to be out in the open and even amongst much larger fish. The only thing they lose when they're in small numbers is that very tight shoaling behaviour that's so pleasing, which is a little bit of a shame and another reason why I'd like to get mine replaced. When it comes to feeding Hengeli, they are very easy to accommodate and will happily take anything from tiny little pellets such as the Hikari micro pellets, as well as flakes. I have found they don't like to feed around extremely boisterous fish such as the larger barbs or anything really that's big and darts around an awful lot, they can even be spooked by zebra danios. And if that is the case, then they will simply move to a quieter part of the tank, but that does put them at risk of not getting enough food. Also, some frozen foods such as bloodworms do tend to be a little bit big for them, but live or frozen baby brine shrimp will always be welcome. They are also perfectly safe to keep with shrimp, Adult shrimp are way too big for tiny little hengelis to hunt, and shrimplets tend to stay hidden away in dense foliage where the hengelis simply won't go looking for them. In fact, these little fish are not active hunters at all, and they tend to prefer to just pick off food that's free floating around them rather than risking looking for it around plants where predators might be hiding. And. Needless to say, perhaps, an awful lot of fish that we would usually keep as community fish are potential predators to such a tiny species, and so Hengeli tank mates do need to be limited to other very small fish, or at least those that have a very small mouth, such as the smaller tetras, the micro rasboras, or some of the dwarf gouramis, just so that you're not running the risk of them becoming a rather expensive snack. But, in general, so long as they are kept safe, then Hengelis are a hardy little fish, and they certainly don't need to be pampered despite their teensy size. And the only real difficulty you're going to have with them will be finding them in the first place. Anywho though, I hope you have enjoyed this little video that's all about Hengeli rasboras. Happy fish keeping everyone, and I will see you again soon. Bye bye!